Dr. Carubula, thank you so much for joining us here on Health Connection. Our topic is conjunctivitis, a $5 word for a disease that we probably remember as kids, pink eye. And we're calling, talking about putting a lid on pink eye. So let's get a definition. What is conjunctivitis, or otherwise known as pink eye? What is it? Yes. So conjunctivitis is also commonly known as pink eye. It is a medical condition involving inflammation of the lining of the eyelid as well as the eye itself. And what are the most common symptoms? The most common symptoms with conjunctivitis is itchiness of the eye, redness of the eye, hence the name pink eye. Um, a lot of times you can also have a gritty sensation in the eye, a feeling of irritation, generalized discomfort, uh, matting of the eyelids, or even discharge from the eyelids. What causes it and how long does it last? There are two main types of causes for pink eye, um, two of them being one is infectious and the other one is non-infectious in origin. So the infectious types are either viral or bacterial in origin and then the non-infectious types are either allergic or irritant based. And so symptoms wise, symptoms typically last about one week to about one and a half weeks, give or take. Okay. If you begin feeling the telltale symptoms, which in my case I've had it, and it's that grittiness that you just right. described, you begin feeling that coming on. Is there anything you can do to, to either head it off or lessen the severity? So a lot of times it depends on the type of conjunctivitis, but you can try um, using cold compresses over the eyelids. You can also use over-the-counter artificial tear eye drops and see if that kind of minimizes the symptoms. A lot of times if the symptoms persist or you develop worsening of the symptoms, you do need to get evaluated by a physician who can decide whether you need to be on antibiotic therapy or not. Okie dokie. Pink eye, more common. I remember as, you know, as kids, you know, yeah. you'd see it in school, but is it more common in children than it is in adults or is age even a factor? Age is not really a factor with uh, pink eye or conjunctivitis. It's seen in children and adults alike. It is more commonly seen in children, however, and um, otherwise age is not really a factor. Okay. You, you mentioned this earlier, uh, contagiousness. How contagious is pink eye and how do we transmit it? How's it how does it get around? So pink eye is very contagious, especially if it's viral or bacterial in origin. Uh, it's primarily transmitted through direct physical contact um, with others through handshakes or sharing personal items, especially if they've been infected with pink eye and are undergoing the infection. If it's allergen-based, usually if you're exposed to something you're allergic to, it can lead to an allergic type of conjunctivitis. Okay, so what are the steps to prevent the transmission of pink eye? And once you have signs that you have pink eye, to what degree do you pose a risk to others? So pink eye is commonly transmitted through direct physical contact. So the key is really to practice good personal hand hygiene through frequent hand washing, um, avoiding handshakes with other individuals if you're infected with pink eye because it's easily transmittable in that manner. Uh, it's also important to avoid sharing personal items such as cosmetics or washcloths or towels. Um, it's also important if you're a contact lens wearer to avoid wearing contacts if you're infected with pink eye because that can worsen the symptoms um, and the grittiness sensation in the eye. So those are a few things that you could do um, to prevent transmission or worsening of the symptoms. So it's safe to say that once you are symptomatic, you are probably posing a, a contagion risk to somebody That's else. That's correct. That's okay. correct. All right. Is pink eye a big deal? Does it pose any serious health risk or is it just an annoying infection that you know, has to run its course? Serious complications are rare with pink eye. However, schools often require children to be on antibiotics for at least 24 to 48 hours prior to readmission. Um, a lot of times if symptoms persist um, or you get worsening of symptoms, it is important to be evaluated by a physician and they can treat you appropriately with antibiotics if necessary. It's also um, necessary to be evaluated by a physician as soon as possible if you have symptoms of pain or sensitivity to light or um, vision changes, it's important to get evaluated. All right, you touched on this. How do we treat this disease and can you treat it yourself or do you really need a physician? So if it's viral or allergic in origin, um, you could try using cold compresses over the eyelids as I mentioned earlier or even over the counter um, artificial tears or eye drops. You can also, it's important to avoid wearing contact lenses during the period of the illness because that can worsen symptoms. And those are four, 
few things you can try beforehand. And if the symptoms persist or symptoms worsen, it is important to get evaluated by a physician. Um, and they can, he or she can start you on antibiotics if necessary. A lot of times bacterial conjunctivitis can cause uh, matting of the eyelids or discharge from the eyelids. And a lot of times the symptoms persist. So that's when you need to get checked out by a physician. Well, what are the implications of leaving it untreated? What if you just let it run? With conjunctivitis, you can run, run the course with trying some of the things we talked about or home remedies like we discussed. Um, the main issue is, I think, if you start developing worsening symptoms or the symptoms persist for maybe more than a week or two weeks, or if, um, you know, if vision is affected, um, sensitivity to light occurs, things like that, you do need to get evaluated by a physician as soon as possible. And schools, especially with children and especially in the workplace, a lot of employers um, and schools want people to be on antibiotic therapy just to be on the safe side. So a lot of times those students and workers need to be on therapy for at least 24 hours prior to readmission back to the workplace. Okay, and related to that, if you've been diagnosed or treated for pink eye, when can you go back to school or go back to work? So that's a perfect segue. Um, so it's safe to be on antibiotic therapy for at least 24 to 48 hours and it's safe to go back to work after you've been on therapy for that long. Um, it's no more contagious than a common cold, so it's safe to return to school or work. It's just important to practice good personal hygiene. That's really the key. All right. Any seasonality to this condition? Is there, is there a peak time of year for it? Uh, there's not really a peak time of year for it. A lot of times you see it more in winter months or in the summer spring months when allergy season kind of goes up. You can see it a lot of times in the children as well as in adults. Okay. How does you, and you, you talked about this earlier in the segment, let's just put a sure. underline under it. You have pink eye and you wear contacts. Right. So um, contact lens wearers are actually kind of at an increased risk of pink eye if they get infected. Um, there's certain strains of bacteria that are specific to contact lens wearers. So it's important if you develop symptoms that are very similar to other types of conjunctivitis that we mentioned um, and you're a contact lens wearer, it's important to get evaluated by a physician so they could start you on appropriate antibiotic eye drops. And it's important to not sleep in your contacts um, routinely at night, changing out the contact solutions and the carriers and the lenses itself to prevent um, increased risk of infection. All right. And this is going this question is gonna kind of sum up everything you said. Sure. Just give us some good rules to follow that can keep us from having this problem to begin with. So like we discussed earlier, it's important to practice good personal um, proper hand hygiene. So frequent hand washing is very beneficial to prevent the risk of transmission. Um, you know, changing out washcloths and towels on a daily basis or at least on a consistent basis, avoiding sharing of personal items with others such as cosmetics or washcloths, um, changing out eye cosmetics, makeup in general every three to six months ideally, avoiding sleeping in contact lenses, um, changing out the contact lens itself, um, solutions and carriers um, on a consistent basis to because those can often harbor bacteria and increase the rate of infection. So overall those would be things that I would do to prevent transmission of the infection. Very well, doctor, thank you. Thank you, it was a pleasure being here.